everybody so today is day three of spooky videos leading up to Christmas um, for today's video I'm gonna be reading part one of a reddit story and it's called I think the hospital I work for is experimenting on patients I saw this video ugh, I saw this story on reddit earlier today while I was scrolling through it and was like I have got to read this for a video um, it is by Glitter Cricket on Reddit and it was submitted one day ago. So I'm sorry if you see me drinking orange juice throughout this. I'm still sick because I'm pre filming a lot of these. So I have time to edit and stuff. Um, yeah. So. So, I think the hospital I work for is experimenting on patients. I work in a small town hospital. The closest thing to us is a Walmart, a prison, and endless miles of farmland. A lot of the patients I get come from at least 30 minutes out, but being that we are the only hospital around in a two hour distance both ways, we are usually the only viable option. Of course, being so small, we don't do major traumas, but we do have a helipad and life flight is available to us. Most of our patients come in for flu symptoms, drug issues, and the occasional ortho patient who has scheduled surgery. And every so often we get a prisoner or two. Other than that, it's pretty much consistent. I work in the ICU unit of the hospital. It's only 12 patient ICU, so it's not like something you'd imagine in a big city or in Grey's Anatomy. The ICU is located on the second floor. Also on the second floor is a PCU wing for people who are cleared from ICU but still need to be heavily monitored, a cardiac wing, and the dialysis clinic. There are a total of three floors, but the third floor never got completely built. The construction started in the 70s on the third floor, but the hospital went through a major lawsuit and ultimately had to choose between the third floor and keeping the hospital afloat. The construction took a back seat and it never picked back up. I had heard many stories about the third floor, folklore, rumors, whatever you would call it, mostly about it just being a dead zone. Dangerous wires, things you could easily fall over, unfinished walls, nothing ever really alarmed me about it. Other than we had so much space we could use for our patients that we weren't even trying to inhabit, but that's neither here nor there. There's an empty, uh, there's an employee elevator that you have access to. That you have, oh my gosh, I'm having a hard time reading, sorry. There's an employee elevator that you have to have access to. I usually use it because the regular one is full of germs. The first couple times I got on, I realized there is, in fact, a third floor option. It requires you to swipe your badge after you push it, and only a few people have that clearance, I'm told. So in the two years I've worked here, I've never tried. I work 12 hour shifts, three days a week. The standard schedule for most nurses, the other morning, I arrived early and sat in my car drinking coffee. I'm on the East Coast, so by 6 a.m. it's still dark this time of year. I parked in front of the hospital and was looking on the second floor, trying to count how many lights were on to guess what our census was and how busy my shift would be, and I noticed something. The third floor, which is always dark, had a light on. It's pitch black outside and the side I park on isn't very well lit. So I even, so even with my bad eyes, I know the light was coming from the third floor. I watch it for a while and see nothing. So I start to excuse it as someone with clearance went up there to fix something, a leak or something of the sort. Work was grueling and mentally draining, but eventually my 12 hour day came to an end. I got in as I'm starting the car I got in and as I'm starting the car, I remember the light and look up. The light is off now. I go home, have a whiskey, walk my dog, watch some stupid reality TV and call it a night. 
That night, I have a weird dream about being trapped on the abandoned third floor. I dreamt that I was walking towards the source of the light and I could hear moaning. In my dream, I wasn't scared. I was just trying to get to the room in fear a patient might be in trouble. I approach the room and right before I turn the corner, my alarm goes off. I drink a 16 ounce coffee on the way to work while listening to a podcast. I'm exhausted and even though I got a solid eight hours of sleep, I feel like I slept none. I pull into the parking lot early like I usually do to finish my coffee and listen to my podcast. I park in the same spot every time. I look up and this time I see a TV on. The first and second floor always have TVs on because it's a hospital. Patients don't sleep here. Patients don't sleep here, but there's a TV on the third floor in a room. I had been told there was no working electricity on the third floor. So if there aren't even lights, who would mount and install a TV and how. I stare at it for what seems like forever, but then eventually get out of my car and head in. About halfway through my shift, I take my lunch, my coworker and I head into the employee lounge and I toss my sad frozen lasagna dinner into the microwave and sit down for the five minutes it takes to cook. I scroll through my FB while I wait and then my coworker Sheena sits down. Are you not eating today? Sheena asks as she sits down across from me with her sub and diet coke. Yeah, I, ha I just have to wait my entire break for it to heat up and then I plan on having it in the car on the ride home. She laughs. Want some of my sub? I probably won't eat it all. She scoots her sandwich towards me. No thanks. I appreciate that though. It looks good. She smiled and took a bite. Hey, hey, Sheena, can I ask you something? She looks up and nods with a mouthful. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen or heard anything weird happening upstairs? Upstairs, she asks with a mouthful and a confused face. Yeah, the third floor. It's just, I've seen some lights up there before and one time a TV. I felt embarrassed as soon as I said it. I feared she'd think I was crazy or that I was finally hitting my breaking point as a nurse. She rubbed her face with the back of her sleeve and finished chewing. What do you mean a TV? Like a TV sitting in a window or something? No, it was mounted and on like in patients' rooms. Why would there be a TV up there? Is there even electricity up there? I didn't think so. I had been told before that there wasn't. But how would the lights but how would the lights and TV be explained though? She looked down at her food for a while, not taking a bite. I've heard a lot of stories about the third floor Cassie, a lot. And I was sure she had. Sheena had been there for 17 years. She was much older than me and far more experienced. Several people have quit here because of the third floor. What do you mean? I asked as I leaned forward. I mean, weird shit happens here, and weirder shit has happened up there. I've worked here almost two years, and I've never seen anything. I mean, yeah, I've heard some weird stories, and that's, and that it's haunted and stuff, but I've never seen anything. Well, until now, I guess. Only You only see it if they want you to see it, she said. They? What do you mean if... I was cut off by a code being called over the intercom. We both jumped up and ran to the room where the code was being called. We worked tirelessly on the patient, but ultimately ended up losing them. The rest of the shift was heavy, and given that we lost a patient, one whom we were all fond of, the topic got lost in the day. A few hours later, I was in the locker room, changing out of my dirty scrubs and back into my civilian clothes when I heard a huge bang above me like someone dropping something heavy. I looked up. Nothing is above us though, I thought to myself. I got in the elevator for the first time in my two years of employment here and popped into my mind. I hit three. 
A black box beeped and flashed a red light. I swiped my card in front of it and it beeped once more and turned green. Then I felt the elevator go up. My stomach dropped. I was really going up. It was nighttime and dark. I knew when the doors opened, I would be greeted with pitch black. What if I couldn't get it to close back? What if I got stuck on the third floor? Who were they Sheena was referring to? The elevator stopped. Ding. The pause between it stopping and opening felt like a lifetime. Then the doors opened. I was met with a long, dark hallway. On the end was a room with a light on. There was music coming from the room. I felt frozen. I didn't know what to do. I had come this far, though. What if a patient had got lost up here? What if someone needed my help? Could someone be squatting up here? I stepped off. I was going to investigate. As scared as I was, I had made up my mind. Hey, where did we go? Oh, it was all inside. Hey, where did we go? Days when the rains came, down the hollow, playing a new game. I knew this song. My grandma used to play it for me all the time. She'd say, my brown-eyed girl, this is for you. And we danced and laughed. I had loved the song as a child. I always thought of her. The song made me happy. But now, I felt like the times when I would feel joy from this song were gone. I started down the hall. I had my phone in my hand, ready to call for help. It felt stupid. I got to the room and took a deep breath before I walked in, readying myself. The room was beautiful, almost like a miniature ballroom. It was so fancy and clean, so misplaced. To the right of me was this beautiful cherry wood end table. On it was a record player, the source of the music. Do you remember when we used to sing sha la 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 I like that one. <laughs> Suddenly there was a bang down the hall and I snapped back to reality. My adrenaline kicked in and I grabbed my pocket knife that I always kept in my purse. Hello, I called out with a shaky voice. I peeked my head down the hall and saw nothing. But then again, it was so dark. Could I have seen anything? The record started to skip. D D D D D. I walked over to it and fixed the needle and it corrected itself. For a moment, I forgot about the sound from the hall. I was distracted by a filing cabinet on the far side of the room. It was old and dinged up and it didn't look like it belonged in a room like this. I walked over to it and pulled out a drawer. They were patient files. At first, I hadn't thought much about it. Maybe they were patients that had died or had been seen several years prior. Maybe it was just old storage for old records. I pulled one out and dusted it off. Sorry. The name on it was Shelly Hardy. I opened it up. The first page read, Subject was administered, experiment, experiment number 431. Oh, that's creepy. I do not like that. And then it read a log or a diary entry. September 19th, 1973, day one. Hardy has been placed in solitary confinement. She has been denied her medication for three days now. Hardy shows signs of manic episodes and paranoia. I read on. September 20th, 1973, day two. Hardy has begged for medication. She's in full-blown detox from lack of medication. She is violent. We chained her to the wall and threatened to take away her meals if she was not in compliance with the experiment. Hardy was not cooperative. Food privileges taken away. What the heck? I thought to myself, what kind of stuff is this? I didn't want to read anymore. I wanted to get out of there. I started to close the file and a picture fell out and slid almost completely under the filing cabinet. I bent down to get it and turned it over as I raised back up. It was a picture of Shelley's corpse. She was in a room with blood covering every square inch of the walls. 
Her eyes were wide open and had a look of torment. She had the words, save me, carved into her skin, on her arms, on her legs, on her torso, on her face, everywhere. I dropped the picture and the file and ran like I had never before. I got to the elevator and hit the closed door button so hard I broke my nail. The doors finally closed and I got down to the ground. I got down to the ground floor. I ran to my car and got in. I locked the door and sat there for a minute trying to catch my breath and trying to process what I had just discovered. I looked up and the light from the room I had just occupied bled into the hallway and reflected on the room above my car. Just enough light came in for me to see the words clearly. Save me, written in blood. Not written in blood, written in red. I'm sorry, there's just so many words going on right now. The drive home was a blur. I laid in bed and kept the light on that night. As I tried to drift off, I thought about how scared I was, how confusing this all was. But I thought about Shelly and how it must have been so much more terrifying for her. I made a promise to Shelly that night. I was going to go back and I was going to find out who did this to her. So that was part one to that story. I'm sorry, I kind of like jambled my words because I was having a hard time with words. I don't know why, but that was part one to it. That was really good. Like, I wonder if this is a true story or not, because if it is, like, if you don't like hospitals, you really don't like them now. Um, so, Tomorrow's video will be part two of this, and hopefully part three will be uploaded soon. There is a part three on it right now, but there's part two, so whenever part three comes up, I will film and upload that. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that thumbs up button if you did, and click the subscribe button down below. And I will see you guys tomorrow for another spooky video. Bye!